Hey guys, it's Vera. I hope you're having a really good Saturday. No, it's Sunday. Whatever day it is. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about how I learned to start writing. I don't think I've ever actually done a video about this, so I thought it would be kind of fun. I'm in my trailer um, up north, um, northern Arizona, and you know, I get to like, you know, listen to some trees and some wind and look at some green stuff, so it always makes me feel better um, when that when that happens. Anyways, um, how I started writing. Um, I rode on the back with my husband when I was married for about eight years. And towards the end of our marriage, um, he had a Sportster 1200 that was going to be kind of like hand-me-down, which I don't know why women always get the hand-me-down bike, but whatever. Um, it was going to be hand-me-down to me, and then I was going to learn to ride eventually. Well, instead he traded it in for a street glide, and that was kind of like, you know, um, Part of our issues anyways so I um, when I went through my divorce I decided I still want to ride I still want to learn how to ride but I'm all by myself so uh, about a year after our divorce I or our separation I um, I had fallen in love with the Sportster Iron 883 it had only been out for two years so there weren't any used ones to buy and I just fell in love with the matte black I hadn't seen a lot of bikes with a black motor before you know, as much black on there as I could get, um, they put on those. And I know a lot of folks say, uh, a Sportster is not a good starter bike because it's top heavy. And I can attest to that. Um, but I kind of feel like if you can ride that, you can ride anything because, you know, everything else is going to have a lower center of gravity. I think it was a good starter for me. So I went down to the dealership. I tried to buy it. Every time I tried to buy one, they would sell it before, like, you know, before I could get down there. I mean, they were selling the black ones, especially the irons in 2010 were selling like before they were coming off the trucks. Um, and I didn't want this, the matte silver. So finally I got one. I bought it, uh, February 1st, 2010 and I couldn't ride it yet. So I literally had to have them deliver my bike, which I know some of you may have had that too. So they delivered my bike. Um, and this, big, huge man. He must have been like 300 pounds. I asked him to ride it into my garage, which I wish I was filming because it was hilarious. Um, and so, <clears throat> so he rode it into my garage and I just kind of stared at it for a while. A couple weeks later, I took my class. Many of you have taken them. I don't think mine was through Team Arizona. I can't really remember. Um, but I took my class. Oh, I don't like that angle. Hello. Is there anything in my nose? Am I good? Okay. Um, I <laughs> took my class. I, I'm a weirdo. Uh, I took my class, came home, and I tried to practice on my bike. I immediately, you know, I, I got it out of the garage. I got it down my very steep driveway, rode around the block, brought it home, dumped it. It was one of those too much front brake situations. Luckily, I was okay, and the bike was okay. My neighbor has to run out, and, and he helps me lift it because I hadn't learned to lift a bike either. She probably should learn that. Um, and then I rode it a couple more times. One time I went up my neighbor's driveway and almost hit his house, but dumped it there. That time I picked it up myself. So I think I dumped it maybe twice. Um, but eventually I learned. And because I dumped it, I got so scared. And I didn't ride it for like a month and a half. So making payments on this brand new bike. It's in my garage. It was so stressful. And I had this friend named Jonathan House. Friend of a friend. And he came over and he gave me kind of a quick one person lesson. <clears throat> and he said, what are you afraid of? And I said, my driveway, it's really long and steep. And he said, okay, we're going to do that 20 times. And I went, okay. And he made me ride my bike every day for 15 minutes, even if it was just, that's all I had. I mean, I was a single mother with an eight year old kid at home. Um, I didn't have a lot of <clears throat> free time. Wow. Hold on. Hold on guys. I'm repping my fantastic Sam's cup from Miss Lena. Yay. Got to rep your friends, uh, businesses anyway. So I, um, he helped me out a lot and I learned to ride without a, without ever having been on a bike. I'd never shifted on a quad before. I'd only ridden those as a automatic. Um, I never dirt biked. I didn't have a husband, boyfriend, dad, friend, sister, whatever helping me. It was like completely alone. Um, and so that's why I have a passion for helping other newer riders. I almost said younger. Hello. Helping other newer riders because you need someone in your corner. You need somebody to come to your house and go through the neighborhood. Not everybody's willing to do that. So those of you that have done that for our friends, I, I just thank you so much. That's amazing. So um, I did my practicing after I was scared to death. I mean, I was in tears. I was so scared. 
after dumping it twice. Did my practicing and luckily I didn't dump my bike again for like nine years and the last time was in Sturgis in front of everybody and I fell in the mud and that was fun. Um, so that's my story about learning to ride and I joined a group, a co-ed group, started riding in groups by May, met a lot of great people um, and it's been my passion ever since and I love it. So hope you enjoy this video. Um, share with me some of your, um, you know, first time riding um, experiences. What was it like for you? Did you have somebody helping you? What was the first bike you learned on? And now I have a soft tail slim and I love her and I have a Royal Enfield and I love her too, although she doesn't have a name. So have a happy Sunday, you guys. Love you. Mwah.